I think that the task that lies before us, and, and, and I think the University of Vermont is a splendid place for this conversation to start to happen, is to reimagine society. And, um, and the question is, what, what in the world is that? But so let's sort of look at what we're confronting. Um, obviously, we're in global financial mess. We you know that. Um, we are in some kind of late stage capitalist society where uh, we really are making, buying, and selling purple plastic penguins for the pool side. It's the most odious phrase I can think of. Okay, And I don't want anybody telling me that I can't have plastic purple penguins for my pool side, although I don't have a pool. But if you ask yourself, why in the world are we doing this? It starts to dawn on you that we don't really have a good answer, but we sort of don't know what else to do, right? Um, the only way we can be in the world is to be in the world of the civilization that we're in, and this is the one that we're in. But if you were to ask somebody, you know, a thousand years ago, or I think it's 800 years ago, uh, in Western Europe, uh, about making, you know, we're, we're utterly commodified. You know, they were doing things that I don't mean this in a sexist sense, but they were doing running around in, in, in armor, having jousting matches, and rescuing fair damsels in distress, and unrequited love, and, and, and fealty to the liege lord, and fealty to God was, was the way you were in the world. But they would have thought we were nuts. They wouldn't have understood our society. Meanwhile, in my view, and probably it's shared by many, we are confronting an enormous money to power structure in the society, in the American society, and in the first world society, but certainly in the American society, witnessed by the flood of money into the financial institutions um, uh, and the money influence on our political processes uh, that is staggering. Um, do you all know that in 2007, 42% uh, corporate profits in the United States went to the financial sector. 42% of profits, not for people making mops, not for people teaching schools, not for university professors, not for people doing plumbing, and not for people making cars, in the financial sector. Now, we need a financial sector, but we don't need it to be 42% of our economy. Um, and all that money is now going to, to, for example, lobby Congress like that to prevent the regulation that needs to happen, and, and we all kind of know that. That means that us ordinary, we the people, remember of the gov of, you know, government of the people, by the people, and for the people, you know, where's Lincoln when you need him? Uh, we the people are despairing. Uh, and the middle class has been decimated, and will be more decimated, and more power is accruing. Could I just quickly ask a question related to that? I mean, that, that's a shift to the service sector economy. Okay? Sure. But from a sustainability perspective, often people argue that that's the way we should go because there is you know, using fewer resources. fewer resources. And so, I mean, if you look at that graph of you know, the yeah. transition from agriculture industry, sure. so how does one then well, Let me get there. Okay. Okay. But I just want to paint a, a really broad picture. Um, everything's, everything's got its price. And that's how we measure value. And I just stop and ask yourself something by way of beginning question. Is what we're doing in the best service of our deepest humanity? And I think we all know in our, in our deep guts that the answer is no. But we don't know what to do that would be in the deepest service of our humanity. Now, into that framework comes your interests, which include the following. Uh, the world breaks up into three classes of nations, first world nations, second world nations, and third world nations. The third world are poverty struck, and they're earning about $1,000 a year per person. Mexico is an example of the second world nation. It's earning about $6,000 per capita. And the first world is earning on average about 20000 per person. Czechoslovakia is the average, and we're at about 40000 per person, except for the current financial crisis. 
So one of the problems that we confront is we really do want material welfare. Nobody wants to see people living the way people are having to live right now in sub-Saharan Africa uh, or in Bangladesh or in places where they're, they're in poverty and they're subject to cholera from polluted water and so on. So, so obviously that's a problem. The other problem is the obvious one is your first responsibility, which is, well, it's a finite time. You confront peak oil, you confront uh, finite water resources, polluting the air, and chopping down our forests, uh, frankly uh, and stupidly. Um, and from that end, we are producing as many bads as we are goods, or nearly as many bads as we are goods in terms of, of environmental resources that we're using up. We know that. Then you get to the fall. Okay, that seems to imply, and you, you all must think about this a lot. Um, uh, uh, an economic model built on forever growth, which is what the economic model that we have is, simply isn't sustainable. It can't be. If growth requires that you keep up using resources, but we can't. So either we have to transition to something that can allow the growth to happen, but doesn't keep using resources, and there may be ways to try to think about that, and or, and or, we change our value system so that the continuous accumulation of goods is no longer the highest purpose of our lives. And I think it needs both. That means on the latter front that I think that we have to consider, um, I wrote a book called Reinventing the Sacred, which you get to do when you get to be older, or you're a theologian, and I get to show off my, I taught at Harvard Divinity School, my award for so I could show it off because I wrote Reinventing the Sacred so I taught there a year and a half ago with a wonderful theologian um, there's another piece of all of this a global civilization of some form is emerging it will in the lifetimes of many of the people in this room what do we want it to be? do we want it to be homogeneous and everybody speaks English and, and eats hamburgers or speaks Chinese and eats you know, kung pao chicken um, I think not, and I think not for a whole bunch of reasons that let me just mention. One of them is the following. We have some substantial number of civilizations on the globe. Some people count 12, like right? North American and Indian and Persian and Russian and Japanese and Chinese and so on. Civilizations um, have ancient roots, and the ancient roots change slowly. right? It's a little bit like biology. You all know the higher taxa, you know, from species up to phyla. We haven't invented a new phylum since the Ordovician. Life seems to build for itself a deep framework around which it rings changes, as in the higher taxa. Okay? Same thing's true for British common law, uh, which was all done by precedent. And uh, old precedents that are widely cited, like, like habeas corpus, um, are the roots of the common law. But then you can fiddle around with details like whether or not a, um, uh, a lawnmower with a, an engine on it counts as a motor vehicle, which is a substantial issue if it's your motorcycle or your, your lawnmower with the car, or with the roof. So I think all of that has to be, all of that's up for grabs. Uh, I'm going to spend a few minutes giving you a uh, uh, beginnings of a theory about why part of it's happening. But um, if we don't begin to consider this range of problems in an integrated way, the whole thing, we're not going to find a solution to it. And we're not going to know the solution ahead of time. We're going to discover it as we make our way. And let me prove that to you rather quickly. Um, uh, people are pretty young, but there are those of us who remember when the computer was invented. I was around when the computer was invented um, in '43. Then we got, then we got, then we got the personal computer. Once there was a personal computer, did that enable, and it was widely sold, that enabled the selling of an invention and selling of 
word processing, right? Once word processing was all over the place, um, well, you had to store files. So that enabled the invention of the World Wide Web. Um, 